Hello and welcome to MB Tech. My name is Matthew Bingham and this video we're going to be talking about creating a lifecycle environment using Cotello. Um, previous to this there was a part uh, two that showed how to create the content view and then uh, from there there's actually one previous to that where we actually set up the product um, for that. If you would you can go to my channel and you can check out those previous videos and uh, let's get started. So the first thing we're going to need to do is create the lifecycle environment and basically you can think of a lifecycle environment as a place um, where content view versions are used by different connected host um, so for example if you had different uh, environments like you had a, a dev environment and a production environment you could create different uh, lifecycle environments with the content views that you've created um, one thing that does happen is when you set up a the lifecycle environment there is actually one called library and that one's basically just a default and that's automatically created um, but we're going to be creating some other ones uh, to get away from or create on top of the library one as well um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're actually going to create a lifecycle environment we are going to do it from the command line using hammer once again um, and then also show you the GUI to it as well. Um, so first off, let's uh, log into the GUI. And um, our content views, as we mentioned, here's the content view here. And then we've got our yum content, which are uh, the base extras and updates. What we're going to do is we're going to create the lifecycle environments. And currently right now, you can see that there's one product, three YUM repositories, total number of packages, and, and how much errata is, is there. Um, and this is the library, the one that I mentioned that was automatically created for you. Um, if you want to do it through the GUI, you could say create environment path. And you could put that information here. But like I said, we're going to be using Hammer, so we'll be doing it from the command line. Um, so we will go to the command line, log into the box. Okay, next we'll use the command line and we'll be using the hammer command again, this time with a lifecycle environment of create with the name of prod, label of prod, and then prior uh, means where it came from. So it's going to be, you know, libraries, the standard and everything's in the library. So we'll be going from the library to production. Um, we'll hit enter here. And it says the environment has been created. If we go back to the web GUI, we can do a refresh on this. And we can see here that it actually shows uh, content views, content host, and then prod here. So prod is the environment, what content views, and which uh, content host um, are currently using that uh, uh, view and stuff like that. So for this here, we, like I said, we just have prod. Um, you could create other ones as well. But we're just going to do prod since this is more of a, a test lab. But you could, like I said, you could have multiple ones, QA, dev, um, whatever you'd like in there. Um, if we do a hammer lifecycle environment list from the command line, we basically can see the same thing. There's library to prod, and then if you notice, the prod has the library um, that's set up prior, and that's what, how we actually set that up. Uh, next, what we're going to do is um, called publish, and basically uh, publishes is we're going to actually publish a content view in order to lock its contents. Um, so you could, like I said, have different levels throughout your uh, production or through your, you know, dev to QA to production to production two to cloud or whatever you'd want for those different uh, uh, you know, content views, I guess. So we, we need to publish that. And then we actually need to publish the content view that we've already created previously. So we would do a hammer content view publish. And 
name and that will be our CentOS 7 content and then a description And hit enter after that line. And when you think about it, really what it's doing is kind of like taking a copy of this and locking it. Okay, we've got the content uh, view published, and now it is actually just you know published basically in the library. Um, so what we'll do here is we'll do a, a hammer content view version list. And we can see here we've got the uh, default organization view and the CentOS 7 content 1.0 version. And then it also tells you what lifecycle environments it's part of. Right now it's only part of a library. You know, we created the lifecycle environment of prod, but we did not uh, publish or promote the version of uh, that content view to the um, lifecycle environment of prod so that's what we're actually going to do now is we're actually going to promote versions of the lifecycle environment um, Okay, next thing we need to do is create the activation key. Um, so it's once again, we're going to use hammer. Um, and here's the hammer command that we use for that. It's going to be hammer activation key, create name, name of the key, CentOS key, description, lifecycle environment is prod, content view, content unlimited host. Activation key has been created. We can actually check out that key with the hammer command. And we can see that it's unlimited as part of production. That's the content view and that's the key name. Once again, from the GUI, we can go to content, activation keys. There's our key. Products in, is there. Um, it can be used during system registration, but there's all the information about that. It shows you from library to production and the content view, you know, how many subscriptions there is, repository sets, host collections, all our stuff. Um, we'll get into that other stuff after uh, we get all this set up, but I just wanted to show you the steps um, for that. So activation key has been created. Now we need to 
add a subscription to the activation key. Okay, next step is to actually add subscription to the activation key. Um, so we're going to do a hammer subscription list. And we can see the whole line that we have uh, set for that and its ID and stuff like that. Next thing that we want to do is actually add the subscription uh, that we have above to our activation key that we did create. Um, so that line looks like this. Hammer activation key, add subscription name, CentOS key quantity one. Subscription ID is actually two. And subscription has been added to the activation key. So now we actually have a activation key associated to an actual uh, subscription. Okay, that was done from the command line. Uh, next we'll go to the web GUI so we can see what it looks like there. So what we're going to do is go into our uh, lifecycle environment. And then from there you can see activation keys. Uh, there's the key that we created. And we can see that which environment it's associated to and what content view. And then if we click on the key itself, uh, we can see what subscriptions it has. So the subscriptions it has are the CentOS 07 repos. And we've got zero that are attached to that. Um, I don't think there's any repository sets. It shows which ones are available, which is base extras and updates. And that's all that we have there for now. Hope you enjoyed that part. That was actually setting up the lifecycle environment, which is going to be part three of the Catello video series. If you missed any of the earlier ones, you can uh, go to my channel and you will see those. Um, knocked out three of those, I believe, this uh, weekend. So hope you enjoyed those. If you would, please like, subscribe, and tell me what you like, don't like, and I appreciate the feedback. Thanks a lot and have a good night.